The Record Runner is a product that I mentioned in a couple of my videos a few months ago and I thought it's time that I take a look at one for myself. It's a miniature Volkswagen van that drives around a record whilst playing it and it's based upon the sound wagon also known as the Vinyl Killer. And whilst it shares a resemblance to those earlier devices, I don't believe it shares any common components. This is a newly engineered product and it came out in 2017. Although according to the back of the box, it does come from the creators of the original Soundwagon, which was out in the 1970s. And some of the highlight features are that it will stop automatically at the end of the record. You can replace the stylus. It's got new enhanced sound quality. It plays 33 and a third RPM records only, and it's powered by two AAA batteries. And despite appearances, they state that the record runner is not a toy. And it's also interesting to note this is an officially licensed VW product with a hologram and everything. Anyway, let's get it out of the box and have a good look at it. Oh, and I perhaps should have mentioned on the back of the box it said it's made in Japan, which is something you don't see very often nowadays. I'd expect something like this to be manufactured in China. Inside the box we've got a sticker and an instruction leaflet, one side's in Japanese, the other's in English, and it looks like this comes from May 2017. They're very honest on here. It says, the record runner can cause scratches to the record, so be careful while in use. Please refrain from using invaluable records. Well, you can't get much more up front than that. At least they're telling you. They've set out their stall there to say, look, this is a novelty. It's something that you shouldn't be taking too seriously. Looking at the bottom of it, we've got a few controls there. We've got volume, we've got a pitch speed, and also an on-off switch, which varies between high and low. Apparently, the record runner may change speeds depending on environmental conditions such as temperature, humidity, or the record surface quality. In order to accommodate these conditions, there's a high-low speed switch. And there's also a reminder in there not to try and play warped records and the fact that this only works on 33 and a thirds. It doesn't have a speed for 45s. As well as the red one that I got, it's also available in blue. And on the top here, you can see the outlet for the speaker, the speaker grill. Underneath, that's where the batteries go, of course, two triple A's. There's no lid for those. They're just held in place with these springs. The four wheels at the corners are fake. They don't touch the record. The wheels that actually touch the record are the ones on the inside, these little rubber coated ones. And the stylus there at the front is held in a locked position while it's not in use, and then it swivels in towards the record as you use it. It's also got a stylus cover on there that I'll just remove. Now, given the position of the stylus relative to the rest of the vehicle, you can see that it's going to be getting pushed into the groove, which is the opposite to a normal record player, where a stylus would get dragged along a groove. The stylus has to be at the front of the vehicle, though. You couldn't put it the other way around, because if you did, the device would just drive off. It needs that stylus at the front, so it maintains the groove, and it follows that with the rest of the vehicle. We'll switch it on, but I'm not going to put it on a record just yet. I really first want to measure the downward tracking force. Now, these scales I've got here only go up to 5.1 grams and they've maxed out, but I have got the thing at a bit of an angle there. I really want to get the three wheels that are underneath it balanced on the surface whilst also getting the outer ones not touching a surface. And then we can get as about as accurate a measurement as we can. So I'll just carefully balance it level like this, and you can see it's maxing it out again. If I then put a five gram weight on here and tally it up, it means we're going to start at a point of minus five grams. So everything above zero will be above five grams. So let's just try that once more, carefully placing it down on here and it's maxed out again. I don't think I've got it quite right there though. So let me just try that again. I really want to get it just carefully balanced. So it's just the stylus on there, the three wheels on the surface. It looks like I've got it now. So I know this isn't entirely scientific, but that to me looks like nine and a half grams of downward tracking force. And it's important to mention, of course, those are the rubber wheels underneath that are touching it, not these outer ones. Those ride just above the surface by a millimeter or so. So yeah, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Nine and a half grams of downward tracking force. That's quite considerable, which is why I'm using an old record here that I don't care about to test it out. So let's put it on here and have a listen. Now, I could see how much you were enjoying that, so I've turned the volume up to the maximum. Yeah. 
Okay, now I know this thing isn't doing this record any favours, and it doesn't sound particularly good either. However, it really is hard to hate on this, because it is just a silly novelty. It's a bit of fun, and when you take it like that, it does put a smile on your face, as long as it's not your most treasured record that it's playing. Now one of those features that was mentioned on the back of the box is the fact that this will stop automatically when it reaches the centre of a record. So let's see if that's working as advertised. Well that was a bit touch and go, but it got there in the end. Now one thing I want to show you is underneath the vehicle here. If you look at the stylus, you might have noticed in that last shot, the vehicle seemed to be almost driving sideways and... That's what's happening. You see the stylus is perhaps uh, 70 degrees or so off being straight, and the vehicle's following that round, effectively pivoting on its rear axle. So this is the angle that the stylus ends up at when it's reached the edge of the record, but if we have a look at one just playing the outside, it's approximately straight, or just a little bit off. And this pivoting mechanism is how the device regulates its speed as it moves across the record. You see, to play a 33 and a third RPM record, it has to do a full revolution every 1.8 seconds. On the outer edge, it has to travel faster because it's going further in those 1.8 seconds than it is towards the center of the disc. So the speed of the motor is regulated as the device moves towards the center. And to show you exactly how that works, I'm gonna to have to take it apart. Now, as I get inside this, you might recognize some of the internals. They do look very familiar. They're similar, if not almost the same, to a device that I reviewed a few months ago, although that has Bluetooth capabilities as well and a rechargeable battery. But other than those two things, they do look very similar to one another. I suspect that they share the same factory or were developed together because they both came out last year. But the bit I need to show you goes underneath this circuit board. And it's the same speed regulator system as used in that other device. People were wondering how it regulated the speed. Well, I'm going to show you that now. So you see these two sections rest on top of each other. If I put it down here, you can see we've got an infrared transmitter and receiver there pointing at each other. Now, when it's assembled, those two things rest inside this plastic trough that you see here that's going diagonally across the base, one at either end. And the way that this works is that the light gets restricted between those two things by the tone arm moving across. You can see here, once it's in the fully open position, which would be the outer edge of the record, the light gets completely through. There's nothing blocking the way. So that will be maximum speed. It's regulating the speed based on how much light comes through. But as it moves across, this shutter closes the aperture there and restricts the amount of light getting through from one end to the other. And that is a gradual adjustment. So as the arm moves in towards the center of the record, the light is reducing, and that will be reducing the speed of the motor correspondingly. So surprisingly sophisticated then for something that really does just look like a silly novelty. However, it's definitely not priced that way. The best price I managed to find one of these for was from Juno Records in the UK at £64.99 and they were about £20 less than everywhere else. And at those prices, I don't really know what category this falls into because it's expensive for a novelty and it's the kind of thing that would ruin your records. I'm not quite sure who the market are for these other than people who want to make a video about them on YouTube. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.
What's that you've got there? What, this? Well, it's a magic speaker. Where did you get it from? Alan down the pub sold it to me. How much did it cost? I traded it for some beans. Magic beans? No, Heinz baked beans. I had a box of dinty tins from the factory. That seems like a good deal. He said it was no use to him because he couldn't understand his accent. Luckily, I don't have an accent, so I should be fine. Yeah, um, anyway, what's so magic about it? Well, when you speak to it, it rings up a DJ who puts on any record that you want to listen to. Any record ever? Yes, and it never gets it wrong. Go on then, give me a demo. Well, how about an old classic? Let the bass go by the DOC. Yeah, okay, fine. Just do it. Right, watch this. Hey Siri, play Let the Bass Go by the DOC. Okay, playing all about that bass by Megan Trainer. Because you know I'm all about that bass. Hey Siri, stop! Trouble. I thought you said it never gets it wrong. Perhaps it's a bad connection. Hey Siri, play Let the Bass Go by the DOC. Sorry, I couldn't find the Bass Go by the DLC. Maybe it needs the punctuation. Oh, right. Hey Siri! Play Let the Bass Go by the D.O.C. No problem. Here's the album No More Idols by Megan Trainer. Are you sure it's not called Silly? No. Hey Siri, play anything by the D.O.C. Sure, here's a personalised station of Joe Dolce. Joe Dolce? Hey Siri, stop! Hey Siri, have you ever heard of the hip hop artist D.O.C? Here's some hip hop by T.L.C. Hey Siri, stop! I think I've been had. Perhaps someone else is listening to it and that means you can't listen to it at the same time. Well, maybe there's a version of the track recorded by someone else. Hey Siri, play Let the Bass Go. Okay, playing Let the Bass Go by the DOC. Together we witnessed one of the most delightful in our time, so um, let the bass go. Hey Siri, stop! See, it's as easy as that. I could have had a copy of the album on vinyls delivered by now. So, what do you think of it then? I suppose it's great if you really enjoy being underwhelmed by things. Flipping heck! I wish I'd just kept hold of those beans now.